It is Monday, and you know what that means. Another episode of Crypto Segments. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Crypto Bobby. I hope you are having a great day, great night, wherever you are watching or listening in from. And yeah, we are back again this week on Monday with another episode, another edition here of Crypto Segments. And we got some good ones. We have a great, great, great shitcoin of the week and as always, the competition is fierce in this stage of shitcoin of the week. But this week, it is absolutely a good one. We have another strong, uh, you think. And then I also want to look at Q1 in review. And Q1 in the crypto world was actually pretty damn good, as we can see from on-chain FX right now. And we'll talk about that. And then introducing a new segment here, and it's Triggered Bobby. Uh, and obviously, as you guys know, when you listen and watch me on YouTube... I get triggered easily, especially when it comes to crypto and some of the ridiculous, silly trends out there. So I want to hop up on my soapbox and rant during Triggered Bobby. So we'll get into all of that and more in today's episode. If you guys are enjoying these segments, by the way, make sure number one to hit that thumbs up button, that like button, but also sound off in the comments and let me know your thoughts on other segments that might be good, might be fun to do, as well as if you have any nominations either in the comments or on Twitter, if you're listening on the podcast or just prefer Twitter at crypto underscore Bobby, as always love to hear segment nominations, as well as ideas that you might have for a new segment. Cause I'm always all ears, but before we hop into segments today, it's April 1st. And before I jump out of the window with all the awful, awful, awful April fool's jokes that are currently happening on crypto, Twitter, on YouTube, wherever they're just, April 1st is the worst day on planet Earth. I don't care what you have to say. April 1st sucks. But being that it's April 1st, we can look back at Q1 of 2019 and take a look at what happened in the crypto market. And as we're looking at it, it was a pretty damn good quarter for cryptocurrencies as a whole. Being that it's April 1st, we can check out the year to date and that'll accurately give us a Q1 so far time frame. Uh, for performance against USD in over Q1 from January 1st to now, we had some incredible price movements, mostly in the, I would say, mid to mid cap altcoins. We had Ravencoin pull the 368% move, still showing some pretty interesting signs there. Engine coin went up 280%, mostly on the back of their partnership or inclusion into the Samsung Galaxy S10 and their wallet. Binance Coin BNB pulled a 200% move. KuCoin shares, because KuCoin just partnered right off the back of exactly what Binance was doing, pulled a 190% move. And then you have Holo Huobi token also went up 160%. Uh, and then we have Tezos. Thank God my Tezos bags. I'm only like 2x away from breaking even now. Shocker, but I'll take that any day of the week. But we had out of the mid to large cap cryptocurrencies on on chain FX. From one to, there are 54 of those. Out of the 54 mid to large cap cryptocurrencies, 45 of them were in the green. And we had uh, only less than 10 that were actually in the red. Stellar, Ethereum Classic, Stratus, Waves, IOTA, XRP, NEM, and Bitcoin SV. Uh, and, you know, a lot of those, I think... It is what it is for a lot of those. I don't have a position in any of those. I'm not a massive fan of, of any of them anyway. So for me, that's perfectly fine on my end. Uh, but you had Ethereum pull, uh, you know, went up about 5%. Bitcoin did even better, was up about 12%. But the vast majority of cryptocurrencies, uh, medium to large cap, were up substantially, showing some positive improvement and really showing that the end of 20, you know, 2018 seems to be the sign of the bottom in the crypto markets, at least for where we are right now. And if we're looking at the market capitalization and the volume on coin market cap, granted, let's take this with a massive, massive, massive grain of salt. Uh, but the market cap was 125 billion, uh, just under 126 billion dollars with 14 billion dollars in 24 hour volume on December 31st of 2018. Uh, we are up to 145 billion dollars and 33 billion dollars of daily volume granted a vast majority of the volume reported on coin market cap uh, is completely inaccurate uh, whether that is wash trading or transaction mining or 
just a variety of, of bad things. So the volume there is not necessarily indicative of any type of, of great trend, in my opinion, but still nice to see we added $20 billion to the cryptocurrency market cap. And a lot of that was really due to the performance of some of those medium to large cap altcoins, as well as Bitcoin's steady 11% rise as well. To kick off segments this week, we need to start with the most famous, most prestigious award in cryptocurrency, really in anything, kind of on the level of, of the Oscars, of the Grammys, and that is obviously the shitcoin of the week. And this week's shitcoin of the week goes to none other than fuel. What is fuel, you might ask? Well, I actually didn't really know about it until I read this article from Coindesk, but it seemed very aptly to be titled the shitcoin of the week. And so the Coindesk article title is Police Freeze Accounts Seize Luxury Cars in Probe of ICO Promoter Van Bex. And so the Canadian police, shout out to Canada. I've been in Canada a few times this winter. Wonderful people, fantastic people, very nice people. Calgary, Banff, shout out. You guys are wonderful. Uh, but Canadian police have frozen assets owned by the founders of blockchain services company Van Bex as part of a fraud investigation into a 2017 initial coin offering that raised $22 million, according to court documents obtained by Coindesk, led by Kevin Hobbs and Lisa Chang. They raised 22 mil worth of fiat and crypto through the token sale called Fuel. Now, if we go down, uh, it's important to note that these charges are not finalized yet. I, I guess in Canada, it's guilty until proven or in, innocent until proven guilty, yada, yada, yada. Um, so I'm not saying that they're guilty, but we'll go down here. Still, the court papers go on to allege that Hobbs and Cheng acquired sudden and substantial personal wealth around the time of the ICO, including two condominiums, one in Vancouver, another in Toronto, for about $3 million each, two Land Rovers. I mean, at least they have good taste in cars and a Lamborghini worth $375,000 that was leased for a three-year term. So what do you do when you raise $22 million in an ICO? Well, apparently you don't actually build the products you were supposed to build. You buy dope-ass condos in Vancouver and Toronto for three mil a pop, get sick Land Rovers because obviously everybody knows Step Brothers, Range Rovers are the sweet thing to drive, and you lease a Lambo. Can it get more stereotypical than that? I don't know. I think that is literally the most stereotypical thing possible. But then even if you want to add to that, you add high roller betting in a, vari in a variety of casinos in British Columbia and elsewhere. So that is fantastic. And if we pop over here to fuel, see this nice red candle on the day. Fuel is down 11% or so today after being up, obviously because the fundamentals were very strong. I was up about 68% over the past uh, over the past month or so, still up about 50%. But hey, that's crypto. That's life. Removing the actual joke behind that, this is listed on Binance. The vast majority of the liquidity on Binance, uh, er, the liquidity for this token is on Binance. If you are a holder of fuel, I would remove the, oh my God, this is FUD. And I would dump that as FUD fast as you possibly can with the preface that I am not your financial advisor. This is financial, not financial advice, but when the government goes after tokens, it's usually not a good thing. So dump it. And as much as I wanted to go ahead and give shitcoin of the week to uh, our friends at, at Tron, because Justin Sun and the whole Lambo debacle, or excuse me, not a Lambo, a Tesla debacle, the whole Tesla debacle, Fuel definitely deserves that for the $22 million raise and then spending a good amount of it on things that absolutely have absolutely, absolutely nothing to do with building Ether Party and you know what they had going on there. So if you invested in that ICO, at least you know, at least you know in the bottom of your heart that your proceeds went to a good place uh, and your Ether or Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency or fiat that you put into Ether Party you know, that went to bettering somebody else's life, just not yours. Now, in an event that nobody could have possibly ever seen coming, that it's just, it's impossible to have seen this coming. Uh, the crypto exchange BitHum was hacked for $13 million in a suspected insider job. Uh, you think? 
This is not the first time Binhelm has been hacked in the past. This is not the first time there has been a heist from this exchange. But every single time this happens, and this is now happening on basically like a weekly or bi-weekly basis, but where you're seeing centralized exchange hacks happening over and over and over and over again, and people are losing the money. In this case, apparently it was BitHum's internal wallet and not actually customer wallets. We'll, we'll see if that's actually true or not. But this happens so often. It's just a, a complete repetitive, uh, you think? Every single time. And this is getting so repetitive that I have a fantastic or what will hopefully be a fantastic spoof coming out later this week on centralized exchange hacks. But if we take a step back out of the uh, you think segment here uh, and just look at what continues to happen with these centralized exchanges, for a lot of the, the I would say the, the less prominent ones, and, and Bithum is certainly a, a, a larger cryptocurrency exchange, but as this bear market has gone on, and while Q1 was definitely a, a positive one, but as this bear market has gone on, there have been numerous exchanges that have had mass layoffs that have let a lot of people go. You know, if you think that their security is getting better while they're laying people off and not making as much money, I think you're it's it's not a surprise to me that as the the market has gone down and pulled back, that the the level of these hacks kind of continues to happen on a very large scale. And I just always caution and urge people to just be smart about where you trade and when you trade, uh, especially on some of these sketchy exchanges because it continues to happen and continues to happen. So our last and our, our newest segment is Triggered Bobby. And as you guys know, it doesn't take much to, to trigger me. I'm a little baby back bitch sometimes. And what is triggering me right now is initial exchange offerings otherwise known as IEOs and every freaking exchange on planet earth that has now decided, oh, wow, well, Binance is doing this. Well, we should do it too. Let's take, for example, Buybox. ICO drops. Buybox has announced its own launchpad program, Buybox Orbit. Wow, that must be new and innovative. We'll hop over and we'll check out IEO launch on Google. Hmm, who else is doing these IEOs nowadays that Binance has had a little bit of success with it? Oh, wow, OKX. Okay, cool. Bittrex? Hmm, Huobi? Oh, okay. KuCoin? Yep. And I posted this the other day on Twitter. I made this and it, I, I, I'm completely serious. It's like every board meeting right now for a centralized crypto exchange. It's like, oh, what should we do next? You know, maybe should we fix the, you know, fix the fake volume, uh, fix security so we don't stop getting hacked every five seconds. Uh, maybe we could do a trading contest. Maybe we could do a launch pad IEO. And it's like, you know what? Let's not fix security. Let's not fix all the fake volume that's happening. Let's not fix all the fuckery. Let's not do any of that. Let's just go launch I IEOs. Let's launch IEOs. Let's let's create a launch pad. Let's launch pad it. Okay, cool. So we'll hop over here to Crypto Potato because why not? Uh, what is an initial exchange offering IEO and how does it differ from an ICO? Okay, we'll get into it. An initial exchange offering, as its name suggests, is conducted on the platform of a cryptocurrency exchange. Contrary to initial coin offerings, an IEO is administered or administered by a crypto exchange on behalf of the startup that seeks to raise funds with newly issued tokens. Okay, so we'll break this down at a really high level. There were apparently a lot of problems that occurred with initial coin offerings, right? You know, you had really no kind of true value for a lot of these these tokens not a fair way for people to to value them a lot of these tokens were utilized for speculation there was kind of centralized control over these uh, over these tokens as well uh, because there's one party obviously issuing them uh, there were you know a, a variety of issues so the initial coin offering the ico boom really came to an end in many respects because the value of these tokens, many tokens, is down 70, 80, 90% from where they ICO'd. 
Some are up, obviously significantly, but many are down and, and down quite a bit. And also there's very uh, murky regulation around ICOs, especially in the US and, and certain uh, other, other jurisdictions abroad as well. So what do we do now that ICOs aren't hot anymore? We rebrand to IEOs. Yep, we change coin to exchange and then we make it even more centralized by having a centralized issuing token be offered by a centralized exchange. It's genius. It is incredible. It makes no sense. And because Binance has done it a few times and had success, every other Joe Schmo exchange on the planet is now trying to do the exact same thing because they're riding CZ's coattails to the moon. Or maybe not to the moon, but their token price is going to the moon anytime one of them talks about a launch pad. And really, when you think about it, when you look at the amount of money that's being raised in ICOs now or IEOs, why would there need to be 10 different crypto exchanges as we can go back down here? Why would we need to have an IEO launch pad on Binance, Bittrex, BitMax, really BitMax, Huobi, KuCoin, OKX, Buybox, Bobby's Buffalo Chicken Exchange. I don't know. It's everywhere. It's the most ridiculous thing. And this trend is so stupid and I am triggered and it grinds my gears. And I think that investors are just going to continue to lose money in this. The only difference is exchanges are making money off the fees while issuing it. So, hey, there's Triggered Bobby. I'll continue to be triggered on the subject of IEOs because they are the exact same thing as ICOs with the same problems, just with a centralized issuer on an exchange. So, hey. That's my problem. Now, again, if you enjoyed Monday's crypto segments, I would love to hear from you in the comments. If you didn't enjoy it as well, I always love to hear that too. If you have suggestions for next week for new segments, or if you have nominations today or throughout the week, I am always open. I am always all ears. So hit me up at crypto underscore Bobby on Twitter or in the YouTube comments. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, hit that like button. Crypto Bobby signing out. Hope you have a good one. Peace.